What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Fatherhood Experience, where we help men leave the average dad life behind and become powerful fathers. We are your hosts, Jason Priest and Zach Smith. We've got an awesome episode for you. We're going to break down some good shit for you guys today. The only thing that we ask, if you get any value out of our show today, please just share the show. Share, Help us grow the show. Help us get the show into the ears of more men who can potentially become powerful fathers. If it makes you laugh, you learn a little something. Shit, maybe makes you cry. I, uh, you guys that have been here for a while know that uh, I lost it a couple of weeks ago on, a, on a, one of our interviews. And so uh, you get anything out of it, man, any value at all, just help us share the show. We greatly appreciate you guys sticking with us. Um, we're going to bring you some value today. So today we're going to break down what what we're about in the fatherhood and really give you the why behind the how you guys have know you guys know Zach and I have talked about that a lot. We're very big on the why behind the how. And so uh, when we rebranded back last October, uh, we had a very powerful message that we wanted to bring to market. And so we're going to bring that, break that down for you today and really give you kind of the, a, the a behind the scenes look on uh, who the fatherhood is and, and what we're all about. And so I'm excited for this one. Zach, what's up, my man? I know you've been a little bit ill. You're coming out of the, uh, another illness for the year. So how are you, dude? Yeah, yeah. Collecting illnesses like it's my favorite hobby, right? Yeah, guys. So I, if I do sound a little nasally, it is because I am a little bit under the weather, but it's all good. We appreciate uh, you we, being we, here, dude. Of course, dude, we push on like we always do, right? I'd have to be in a coma for me to not record this, dude. As long as I'm able to talk and I'm not coughing <laughs> yeah. every five seconds, we're going to record this You're thing, in. man. So yeah, like, yeah. we're here, we're handling business. What's up? Let's go. I love it. No, yeah, I love it. And dude, it's funny because, and you know this, but um, I, you know, I'm coming off of a family beach vacation and uh, I was <laughs> <You were> sick. <laughs> yeah, I was sick heading into the vacation, uh, which I'm very, uh, very grateful for my strong immune system and being in, in a healthy fit dude, uh, because I was able to bounce back pretty quickly. And that's uh, one thing that um, that I often do when I get sick is practice gratitude, which, you know, we're, we're very big on that anyway, but uh, practicing gratitude for the fact that I am healthy, I am strong, I am fit. And so generally speaking, I'm able to bounce back pretty quickly. Um, I, when I was, you know, when I was fat and out of shape, uh, so when, when I was in my worst 60 pounds overweight, as I've told the story before, uh, I remember getting sick quite a bit due to not bouncing back very quickly. Like that was a, it would, it would be a long drawn out piece because I was eating like shit. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't drinking water. I was eating nothing but sugar, which probably was just feeding the infection the whole time. And so uh, it was a vicious cycle. So no, man, I'm, uh, I'm excited for today because I think we've, uh, we've talked about who we are, what we do in prior episodes, but I really want to break down our pillars today and, and really highlight pillar number one. Um, for those of you guys that have been around a while, you, you probably heard us talk about our four pillars of the fatherhood, but those are fitness, family, finance, and eventually freedom. What we want to do is help every man that we work with and who becomes a part of the fatherhood become free from fear and doubt around their health and fitness, their family and their relationships, and their finances. We feel like that is how you can become a complete man uh, and a complete father and really lead your family uh, in, the ultimate, in the ultimate fashion. Because when your family and your relationships are strong, your kids look up to you as the leader in their life, the superhero in their life, your, your wife and, and you have a rock solid marriage, sex life's on fire, uh, family and relationships are rock solid, dude. You've got a good support measure, uh, i.e. our community around us that we surround our, our brotherhood. Um, families, family's important, obviously, right? And without being in, in top health, uh, peak health, it's very hard to have the relationships that, uh, that you desire. And then obviously with finances, dude, I mean, dude, you, you got to have money to, to make it in this world. And so uh, it's very, very challenging to be broke and do much with your life and, and lead by example. Um, when you're, you're telling your kids to go out there and, and do great big things, um, and you're struggling to make ends meet. And so I think there's a lot, uh, a, a lot that we could unpack today, but I really want to focus on the fitness component and, and really break that down from our, our standpoint, because when people hear fitness, you know, it, you generally think physical fitness. And so with our four pillars, you guys probably notice they're all F's, right? Fitness, family, finance, and eventually freedom, right? Freedom, for, freedom to live life with, on, uh, with your own intentions, live life on, on your, on your watch. And so uh, when I, when we talk about fitness though, everybody are, are generally speaking, people, people kind of gravitate gravitate toward the physical side. And I really want to expand on that, man, because our fitness is, is obviously all encompassing, right? Physical, emotional, spiritual. Um, you know, th th these are all aspects of your health that equal a fit man. You can't be a, you can't have a fit physique um, without mental fitness, right? You can't be a complete man without both. And so really want to unpack that dude. And uh, anything that you want to add to our four pillars before we dive straight into the fitness side of things? 
No, nah, man, we'll dive, we'll dive straight in, man. I like how you talked about how any fit person has a, has a somewhat like you, you talk about the mental side of it. Right. Because one thing that I like to say is that your physical fitness is just an extension of your mental fortitude. Yes. is really what it is. And they, and the reason why we're touching on our pillars guys, is because we want you to understand why we have our pillars set in the way that we do and how it actually serves you. You understanding what our four core pillars are is just going to help you just by knowing and being cognizant and aware uh, of why yeah. these are important. So no, hell yeah, let's just dive right into the fitness side of things, man. What most people don't realize is, like I said, mental, it, it, mental, your mental fortitude is just what leads to physical fitness. And yes. then your physical fitness then radiates everywhere else in life. That is the order, no matter what. It's the Mind, foundation, dude. body, yeah. everywhere else in life, right? Most people, and we all know this to be true, statistically speaking, people lose weight gain it all back, right? Lose weight, gain it all back. That's like the nature of weight loss journeys in America now, or probably the world shit, if, I, yep. if I'm really oh, being yeah. honest, yep. right? The reason being, they do not fix the mindset, which is one of the one of the components that we actually teach in our curriculum is, is mindset. Because if you don't fix the mind, the body will only follow for so long, right? Like you're only going to get results for so long until you start going back, you backpedal to your old old ways. You become your, your old self. You start taking on the behaviors that you used to do. So you get to the weight that you used to be. That's the way that it works. You gotta fix the mindset. It's okay to be obsessed with the aesthetics, you know, as one component of your overall fitness, but it cannot be everything. The people who are only obsessed with the physical component of fitness are the people who will gain temporary results and lose it all later. Because if you do not fix your mind, if you not flip that switch, if you not shift the paradigm of what you need to think, how you need to behave and the behaviors that you need to take on to achieve that physical fitness as a byproduct, you will never, ever, ever achieve those results. And more importantly, keep them. 100% dude, spot on. And you mentioned mind body a little bit ago, and, and I'll, I'll even make an extension of that and say soul, because when you think of yeah. a complete person, it's like, you know, that's what we think mind, body, soul, right? Right. Uh, for, for those of you guys that are out there and you hear the word fitness, how many of you think mental fitness, physical fitness, spiritual fitness, emotional fitness? The reality is, is, you know, to, to lead your family by example, to become the ultimate leader in your life, one thing that, that, and I'm even working on this very, very hard lately because I'm, I'm bad at it, man. Like I'll, I'll, I'll own it. It's one of those character flaws that, um, that I'm really striving to work on because I don't want to have a short fuse, but that's your emotional reactions to things, right? When you, when you emotionally react, that is the opposite of leadership. And so it's, it's why it's become such a high priority in my life right now, but I'm with you, dude. Like when, when generally speaking, if your only focus is physical fitness, you know, and, and I'll even take it an extension further and say, you go out there on Instagram, right. And see these, some of these airbrushed Instagram models, right. Yeah. They might be the full package physically, but dude, a complete shit show mentally. And that is not, that is not a powerful man. That is not a powerful father, dude. If you're mentally, if you're mentally unstable, you're emotionally unstable, but you're physically fit you're not the complete package, man. You're not going to be able to do the things you need to do in the times of need for your family. As fathers, we want to be providers, protectors, and you can't provide and protect unless you're, unless you're your physical, you're, you're in your top fitness with physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all of it. And it takes constant growth. And so for me, uh, my, my answer to all this, my, uh, or my solution to all this is, is constant growth, right? You and I are very big on that personal development and constant growth, always working on becoming a better man. So when I tell you guys that I'm working on, you know, my emotional reactions, I'm not, you know, I'm not in the, in the other bedroom, uh, being a complete basket case. I'm trying to eliminate the short fuse that I have with my seven-year-old who back talks me, for example, or, you know, or, or another, you know, another example doesn't clean up the game room after he destroys it. That's the emotional, um, the emotional fitness that I'm working on right now to be a better leader in my life. And so when we hear the word fitness, it's often, uh, it's often grouped into the physical fitness side of things, but I love that. I love the way that we break it down because fitness is all encompassing, dude. You cannot be a complete package without mind, body, and soul, right? You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta be in touch with those three things, um, at least, uh, to, to be able to move forward in life with any kind of speed and, and any kind of power, if, if I'm, if I'm going to describe it in a way. Yeah, no, super true, man. Like you're like, you, it's, it's weird. You know how many people that I've seen in the past who get the, get the abs, 
get the butt, get, you know, whatever yeah, it yeah. is that they're trying to sell to you. Right. Yeah. But like you said, they don't have the mental side, like on lock. What happens with those people is usually they tend to have disordered behaviors, yeah. whether it's in the gym, excessive cardio, seven days a week, double days and all that stuff, or eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia, whatever it may be. Yep. Those people who don't fix their mindset first and don't have a system that can allow them to sustainably like maintain the results that they have typically have to rely on distorted behaviors to maintain those results. And the problem with disordered behaviors is if they never get addressed, you're in for a rough ride. You are in for a rough ride. And if they do, guess what they fix first? Your thought process. <laughs> it just yep. proves the point that you have to work on the mentality, your mentality, your mental state of mind in order for you to sustainably maintain what it is that you work so hard to achieve. So again, it, it, there's so many people in the world, so many people in the world that rely on disordered behaviors to maintain that. It's, it's almost like a facade. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a facade, right? If you're, if you don't fix your mind, because you're just kind of, you're doing anything and everything you can to extreme measures to maintain these results that people think is just like, Oh man, this guy just has gifted genetics and he's so talented, such a hard worker. I mean, sure. You might be, you might have good genetics. Sure. You might be a hard worker, but really you're, you're, you have an eating disorder. You're doing something unsustainable, which is working out two times a, a day, seven days a week. And you're not a professional bodybuilder or something like that, right? Right. It's, it's your life can be a mess. Your headspace can absolutely be a mess, dude. And if your mind is in a state of not toxicity, um, but for this context, let's say toxicity, because obviously, you know, what toxicity is right. I'm talking to a previous ICU nurse here, uh, <laughs> but you know, just, just for, for lack of better words, a state of toxicity, dude you're going to, your, your life's going to be kind of shitty, dude. Let's, let's yep. be honest with you, man. You're going to feel like you're going to be one of those people who got the results, always looked happy. I don't know what was wrong with him. I wonder why he, you know, killed himself or whatever it may be. And not to get too dark with you guys, but like, that's what you see mm -hmm. that, right. That's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff you get. He was the last person I ever thought would do that. I can't believe she would do that. She seems so happy. So mm -hmm. great. You know what I mean? But really that's what, what was a cover up. Yeah, it was a cover up. You got to fix your mind, dude. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> no, I, I can't agree with you more. And I think, you know, when we when you no, and I not talk to get dark, dude, real quick, I need not to cut you off. But like, I know we're talking about fitness here, but like, dude, mental fitness is a thing, too. Right. Oh, 100 so. percent. Dude, our, our fucking suicide rate in this country is sky high, man. Like the mental yeah. health, you know, I sh the last couple episodes I've done have been all on mental health when you were out and <laughs> when you were in, in on vacation. And so, dude, like, it's uh it's a real thing and men don't talk about it enough dude it's like a right. it's taboo when it comes to men dude it's like and i've i've said this many many times on our show but like the whole you know rub some dirt on the wound it'll be okay big boys don't cry you got to be strong and brave we don't show emotions and it's led to this it's led to this uh this generation of men who like are now like basically outcasts when it comes to emotions right because they're not they, they've been told their whole life they're not supposed to show it well, then they channel it and they hold it all in. They don't have anywhere to channel it. Excuse me. They hold it all in. And then eventually it got to come out somehow, right? Does it come out in an extreme measure like what you just said, ending life? Because that can certainly happen. Or does it come out in other behaviors in their life? Do they start to turn to, you know, the substance abuse? Or do they start to turn to disordered behaviors? Like you mentioned, uh, like uh, I think, um, uh, when Eminem quit, quit doing all the drugs, he started running a marathon a day, right? Like that's not healthy either. Right. So right. it's, it's finding, finding these weird, you know, weird outlets that, that certainly they might serve them temporarily, but it's, it's never, um, it's never the long-term solution because all it is, it's another crutch, right? It's, it's not continuing to work on your, your mental toughness and, and your mental fortitude and really your mental health in general. I think a lot of guys, they feel like they can't talk about it. Uh, I think that's one of the one of the things about our culture that's so inviting to men is because when they come into the fatherhood, they're able to come in, they're able to share the vulnerable stuff, they're able to talk about the problems that they're having that are outside of just, you know, the health and fitness side of things or their family and their relationships. They're talking about deep, deep stuff where, dude, like on the surface, I would have never guessed that about some of our guys. But dude, we're all battling our own demons, man. We're all we all show up. We, we all show up to life in in different states every single day some of us battle some deep shit others hold it in and then it it comes to a head you know months and months down the road 
Um, but everybody's going through some shit, dude. And that's the reality of is like, nobody has, you know, no, nobody has this, you know, picture perfect life that doesn't have ups and downs, but as men, dude, we got to have a safe space. We got to be able to talk about that stuff. And so when we talk about fitness and, and health and fitness being the foundation of living your best life, like it's not just the abs guys. It's not just the, it's not just the pecs. It's your mind, dude. It's your mental strength, your mental toughness. Can you get through some trying times in life and hold it together for your family? Can you pull through knowing that you're the rock of the family because you're not just mentally strong, you're physically strong, you're emotionally strong, you're spiritually strong. And when times get tough, you're going to be the one that holds it together, not the one that's crumbling because you're not making yourself a priority. 100%, dude. Mic drop, mental, <laughs> mental health. 100% important, but let's flip it to the physical side of things now, right? Because then you get your mindset. Your inverse right. relationship. Awesome. Dude. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So now that you got your mindset right, now you're doing the things that you know you need to do in order to get the body right. Now, the importance of understanding or of getting your body right is obviously health issues, right? Obviously health issues because the person who's in great shape, who's in great shape, I mean, I, you know, granted, they might be due to doing some disordered stuff is going to be generally healthier than somebody who has great yes. mental health, but they're 400 plus pounds, right? Yes. That's just, you know, that would be that's a safe assumption right there. Yes. So the importance of, of the physical fitness side of things is obviously health, but also confidence, because we all know there's multiple ways of possessing confidence. And one of them is understanding and liking what you look like, or understanding, sorry, what you like, or liking what you see when you look in the mirror, right? Because one thing that I like to explain to some of the guys here when they're when we're really thinking about it is like, oh, are you confident? They're like, yeah, but are you really confident? Mm -hmm. Because there's confidence mentally, keeping the promises you make to yourself, right? And then physically, liking what you see, like I said, if I were to take somebody who is 400 plus pounds and they say, yes, I'm absolutely confident, successful person, great family, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, all right, dude, now take, you know, take your clothes off and look in the mirror. Do you like what you see? Are you confident right now? Are you confident going and walking out to the beach? If I just put some shorts on you, don't that lie. answer becomes no very quickly. No, very fast. They say, they say yes, yes. Sorry, you're an arrogant it's a liar. Face lie. Yeah. You're an arrogant liar. Right. Because if I put somebody who's that much, who's that heavy in front of the mirror in, in these boxers, the underwear, whatever the they're hell gonna it is, hate versus what they somebody see, versus somebody who's broke and poor, but he's in phenomenal shape. Who do you think is going to feel more confident in that situation, that scenario under that circumstance? Yeah. Obviously the person who's in better shape now. So you're, Go ahead. Go ahead. I just well, want to well, go ahead. I was just going to say, <laughs> well, you know, what, me, so well, what, I'm saying is, okay. what I'm saying is a lot of people will, will tell themselves that they're confident. That's, that's great and all, but in order for you to be confident, you also got to take on the behaviors that are going to allow you to earn that right to be confident because yeah. confidence is not something that you're just God given. You know what I mean? No, confidence no, no, no. is something that is absolutely earned. And when people say that they're confident because they're driving around in their nice car, wearing their nice watch and their nice chains and accessories, wearing the nice fitted clothes, clean haircut, you're barring the credibility of the brands that you're wearing. Yep. You're not truly confident in, in, in yourself when you take the, all that stuff away. If I took away all your material items and you were just there, you in a mirror, are you as confident as you, as you say you are now? That, that was my point. No, I love it. Physical, you got to get the physical fitness. And guess what? When you're physically, you're physically fit, you're also more mentally like confident. So right. it, like you said, it it's works. An inverse relationship. It works. And yes. that's, um, you know, hand and, and in so, hand. yeah. And you, you use the 400 pound guy example, right? Like the, the reality is, is if you get somebody like that, they might hear this episode and they're like, well, shit, I got such a long road ahead. But the bottom line is, dude, this is a, this is a lifelong journey and everybody, you know, we, we always talk about the immediate gratification thing, right? Like that's where we all lean toward. And so when, when we talk about the foundation of, of living your best life with health and fitness as the foundation, it's not, about, it's not about a hurried up process, dude. It's a daily process that's earned. Like you said, you have to earn your physical fitness. It is something that is a constant journey. It's a constant road. It never ends, right? Doesn't matter if you're a 70 or 80 year old man, dude, you still have to be working on your physical fitness or you are, it's the whole move it or lose it scenario, right? You either move it or you lose it. If you're not moving it, you're losing it. And I came from a place where I did work in a nursing home. I was a director of nursing in a nursing home for a few years. And I saw some young people in there. I'm talking early and mid fifties young in a nursing home, dude. Cause they didn't, they didn't dude. move it. They're That's fucking right. debilitated. They're laid up. That's not right. It's not right, dude. No. And so when you're talking about those, and, and even, dude, 60s are too young. But we had a couple that were in their 50s, man. It's not okay. 
And when I saw that, I'm like, dude, you're going to live the next 30 years, 25, 30 years of your life Yikes. in a nursing home. That's the opposite of physical fitness. And so when you talk about the 400 pound man, you guys are listening right now. You're like, well, shit, I'm, you know, I'm 275 and I should be 175. And what you got to realize is this is not a slap in the face for you. This is aligning the priorities with the man that you know you're capable of becoming, right? You're, we're, we're breaking down the things that have to be incorporated into your life for you to live your best life. Mental fitness, physical fitness, emotional and spiritual fitness. These are all things that you have to be in tune with and be constantly working on or else you're not going to be the complete package. You're going to have areas of your life. And I'm not saying that everybody needs to be like a robot, dude. That's not it. It's the constant desire to get better. It's the constant desire, even if, if we want to talk about the 1% better mentality, right? It's the constant desire to crave more in life because you know you're capable of more, right? It's not, it's, 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 it's avoiding letting your guard down and becoming complacent because there's more potential for you. You're, you have untapped potential. It's not, I'm happy with where my life is right now, so I'm not going to do anymore. I'm, I'm a two day a week guy at the gym. I have about 40 pounds to lose, but you know, I get my workouts in like, that's not it. That's accepting average. And we are not here to accept average. We're here to challenge you guys to have a better life, right? If you want a better life, you're going to have to choose the heart, the road that's less, uh, the, the, that's less traveled sometimes. And that's it. You're going to have to choose the situations in life that are more challenging for you. You're going to have to choose the hard road sometimes to challenge yourself and get a little bit better and get a little bit better. And sometimes it sucks. That's it. I don't love working out every time I go to the gym. I don't love eating a salad every time it's time to eat healthy. Dude, it's sacrifices because I know what's on the other side. It's not what I want. It's not about what I want in this moment. It's about what I want long-term and long-term. I want to have a healthy lifestyle. I want to have great relationships. I want my finances to be aligned with my goals. And I want my kids to look up to me as leaders. And I want to lead by example for them and show them a better way. And in order to do that, my health and fitness are my top priority because I know that if I'm making myself the number one priority in my life, they get the best version of me. And that's it. 100%, dude. Yep. Yeah, I'm the same way as you, dude. I don't always like working out. I don't always like choosing the healthier option, but I love the way it makes me look. I love the way it makes me feel. And if I had to choose a hard, like we always talk about, yep. I'm choosing the hard because I had the opportunity to get better by working out in the gym or choosing a healthier meal versus the hard of not doing that. And then having to go to the doctors every freaking quarter because I have to check my, my blood glucose and my, my yeah. triglyceride levels and all that stuff like that. And then going to the, the pharmacy to get the medications and, and all that shit like that. If I had to choose my hard, you know, me, you know, you know, I'm well, and you on know top us, of that feeling like shit all the time, dude, exactly. Like if you're, if you're needing all of those things that you just, you just listed off the medications, the glucose checks, the A1C checks, all of that stuff, your triglycerides, your lipid panel, all that. If that's being monitored frequently, well, the, the, the elephant in the room is the way that you feel on a daily basis. Cause it's not good. Let me just tell you that yep. I came from that world and I know how shitty it feels and all every one of our that, clients we lived in that world. Yeah. And we, we still live in, in that, that world, world because we witness our clients coming out of that world on a daily basis, dude. Yeah. When I see success stories like Adam and Nick and Rick and all these, our, our guys crush it, dude. When they come out on the other side with a new life and a better way of life, uh, we get to relive it again. Cause you're like, well, shit, I was never 400 pounds, but I know damn good and well what it feels like to feel like shit all the time. And it is not right. a fun life to live. Yeah. A lot of people we talk to, man, I, I'll talk to them and they'll just be like, yeah, no, I feel okay. I feel okay. I'm like, dude, do you really feel okay? Or do you just feel like shit and you're used to it? <laughs> That's like, That's, and, and I don't yeah. want to jump the gun and start talking about the freedom side of things, but we do really want you to be, you know, free from fear around your health, right? Yep. We want you to be able to go to the doctors and not be scared of what you see when you get the blood work, right? Because a lot of these guys are like, I don't, I haven't been to the doctor for three, four years. Man, why, dude? Why? I feel fine. No, 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 no. You're lying to yourself, dude. <laughs> yep. You've been feeling like shit for so long. You forgot what it's like to feel good, man. So if there's any kick in the ass that you can get out of this episode, it's to get up and do something that's going to serve you and help you become better so that you can be, you can be done with feeling like shit. You can be done with the sleep apnea, the medications, the type two diabetes, the low energy, like you could get rid of all that shit. So you can really remember what it's like to feel good, dude, because trust me, coming from Jason and I, like I said, we've lived in that world. We know what it's like to have all those negative health ailments and side effects and shit like that. It sucks, dude. It feels good to feel good. And it feels like shit when you don't. So 
this is the kick in the ass for you, man. Go do something that's going to serve you and help you get better, you know, get better overall so that you can start feeling good again. It's time. It's time. No, I, and yesterday was, was time. And that's the thing is like, sure. you know, when you talk about feeling like shit, man, it's like, I'll just add this before we close shop because I think a lot of guys out there and, and you know, like I'm so big on awareness, dude. I, I want like the more aware we are, the more ammunition we have to act. It doesn't mean that you're going to do shit. It doesn't mean you're going to change, right? Change is hard, but if you have at least have the awareness that's that you need to change. Well, now you've got that heavy weight weighing on your shoulders. If you're not aware, you can't change. Number one, like you don't know how serious the issue is. And so I, I say all that to lead up to this is that the human body is an amazing machine. Most people don't give it the credit that it deserves. The, we were, we were created <laughs> to be a insanely intelligent machine, dude, like down to the cellular level, our body, is an amazing functioning machine. And with all that, it is insanely talented at compensating for illness, okay? When you feel like shit, your body will do everything it can to make you feel better naturally. If you are somebody who, uh, if you're somebody that gets sick often, you know that if, you're, if you play the whole immune system role and you let your immune system do its thing, chances are you start to get sick a little bit less, right? As long as you're taking care of yourself. But I'm telling you guys this because as somebody who worked in the ICU and somebody's seen a lot of young men come in there, sometimes there are no warning signs, dude. Sometimes there's no chest pain for your heart attack that you're about to have. Sometimes you don't know that your A1C was 14 until you went to the doctor because you hadn't been there in four years and you're 75 pounds overweight. And your A1C is so sky high, you don't have any idea. The reason you don't is because your body is so good at compensation. Your, your blood sugar didn't go from 70 fasting to 270 fasting overnight. This thing takes time. Your body is amazing at compensating over time and making you feel as optimal as you possibly can. And so, Zach, when you talk about telling guys that, hey, man, do you, is it that you feel okay or is that you felt like shit for so long? You just don't, you just can't tell anymore, dude, yeah. that is 99.9% .9 of the time, the truth, because of how amazing the body is at compensating. It will make you feel as good as it possibly can. And the damage might already be done. And so like Zach said, man, you guys use this as an awareness episode, get out there and make some moves this week, man. This is momentum Monday today. If you're listening on Monday, like there's no excuses, dude, you guys are in our world. You guys got weekly motivation, inspiration, and knowledge coming, coming from us every single week. Get tuned in. Get plugged in. Go follow our Instagram page, at The Fatherhood Experience. Go get plugged into our free group. Go into the show notes right now. There's a link down there to join our free dads group. Get more of this content in your life so that you can actually start to make a difference in your own life so that everybody in, in your life, that all your loved ones get the best version of you, man. And that's it. So you got anything else before we close today? That's it, dude. This is your kick in the ass. Let's get to work, boys. You guys get out there and crush it this week. Make some moves, man. Y'all have an awesome week, and we'll see you next week.